Hey guys, it's your girl Angel. In today's video, I want to talk with you guys about how not only to prioritize your mindset and your mental health, but also your physical health. And I know New Year's resolutions tie into that. And as much as I hate those, I want to help you see it through. First thing that you're going to want to do is set your goals. I think when it comes to the gym especially, that's when the goals become the most unrealistic that I've ever seen. I'm just calling you out, you know it's the truth. When it comes to gym expectations, the first thing you wanna do is set specific and realistic goals. Now, as someone with a love-hate relationship with the gym, something that has always worked for me is non-visual goals. When you start working out, when you start your fitness journey, it's because you wanna see physical changes. I have the kind of body type and the mental set where I don't see change in my own body. You might see it, they might see it, I won't see it. Another thing to really highlight here is that when we're in the gym, we're prioritizing our health. We're not just prioritizing what we look like. And I know that's like 95% of the reason why we all go, but I do want you guys to keep in mind that you feel good, you look good, you feel great. I would encourage you to start by tracking how much water you're taking, how many steps you're getting in every day. The most physical change that I was able to track has always been my steps. I know when I get to that 5,000 to 10,000 steps a day that I'm really getting active and I'm putting myself out there, which was the most important thing to me, was to move my body. I guess my advice for you when it comes to setting goals and getting started in the gym would really just be to show up for yourself. Show up, be consistent, find what works for you. I think once you begin to master a new hobby, then you can set more realistic goals for you along the way. I know New Year's resolutions can be really tricky, which is why I hate them with a burning passion. But it got you here, and I'm really proud of you for even getting started, so keep it up. Next thing I wanna talk about is gonna be starting small. Be so fucking fair with yourself if you're gonna go into the gym day one swinging 50 pound weights around. You're gonna get hurt, and you're not gonna have a good time, okay? When you wanna see big results, you think you need to implement big changes. It's not always necessary. I think you can get really great workouts in with really minimal equipment or lower weights. You don't have to be bench pressing 200 pounds to have an effective workout. You don't wanna burn yourself out. I say it all the time with all aspects of life, but when you get into the gym and you start doing like hour and a half workouts and you're doing this, or you're doing that, and you're going from this machine to the next machine, from legs to biceps to triceps, you're gonna get overwhelmed. Start slow. I always, always, always recommend going in with a plan. Um, maybe you found a fitness influencer that you really like and she has a 30 day, you know, 30 minute routine or you're trying 75 hard and you wanna try any workouts. Like whatever it is that you're doing, be reasonable and make it manageable. You can always increase your goal as you progress in your fitness journey. The gym is not for everybody. Okay? Certain things are for certain people. Pilates is not for everybody, and that's okay. Recognize what your strengths and your weaknesses are, because my weaknesses are definitely running on the treadmill. Actually, running altogether, breathing, not for me. But when I tell you running made me feel like I was going to die, I don't know if it was the altitude, if it's my horrific old lady knees, but everything about running was miserable. I hated it, I trained on and off, on and off, and it just, didn't pass the vibe check. The best way to have long-term results is finding something that you genuinely enjoy. Being in the gym when I was in college was something that I loved to do. Now, I don't know if I love to do it because I was in like my heartbreak breakup era. And I feel like that villain era when you just got out of a breakup is totally different than other stages of your life. So keep that in mind with this story. But I really wanted to get back into the gym and I've bought programs and I spent money and I signed up for classes. And until recently, I found a sort of workout mix that really works for me. I love swimming, but I hate swimming in the winter um, for the obvious reasons. In the off season, I try to find hobbies and things that I really enjoy. I know it's hard. I know it's expensive to like try all these new things, but put yourself out there. I heard ClassPass is a great like resource for those kind of things, so see what's available in your city and go from there. I think the difference between amateurs and professionals is the routine. I don't think that people who look the best and have the most amazing physique are any better than the rest of us, but I think they stick to their routine and they're a lot more consistent. Now, where it gets difficult is you don't want to say, I'm going to work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday from 12 to 2, and that's going to be my routine. 
because the second something throws you off of that routine, you're never going to go back. Ah, I didn't work out Monday, so now like I have to work out Tuesday, but I can't work out Wednesday. And it just becomes a snowball effect. Give yourself grace. Give yourself leniency to be flexible. Do what works for you. I think when it comes to creating a routine, workout splits are very helpful. I know a lot of people say, okay, I'm going to work out, you know, glutes one day. I'm going to work out quads one day. Upper body and back are going to be my four main areas that I'm going to target. That's great. If you're someone who likes to do fitness classes, talk to your mentors, talk to your instructors and ask them, hey, like, should I come to Cycle Bar four days a week? Or should I also implement walking? Should I implement weight training outside of this to really set myself up for success? Ask the professionals. I want to be a fitness girly. I do. I'm just not the one. And I always encourage you guys to find people who are the masters of their trades. I love adulting. I love talking about self-help. So I want to get you excited about working out. But don't ask me the specifics. Because I don't really know. The next thing that I think is super important is warming up and cooling down. I know a lot of people have like gym addiction. Is that, is gym a word? Like gym intimidation, where you get to the gym, you don't know what to do, you feel like everyone's looking at you and you kind of freeze. And the best way to kind of combat that is to prepare your workouts ahead of time, but allow yourself time to warm up. When I was younger, I found that in my 10, 15 minutes stretching and warming up on my mat, I kind of got to look around the gym, see what equipment was open, see the best way I could fit myself into an already very crowded gym. It's the beginning of the year. Everybody and their mom is at the gym. Everybody wants to be getting their 2024 physique going, and that's great. I think there's space for everybody, but sometimes, especially for me, I find it super overwhelming when there's like 10 people breathing this close to my face, sweaty and stinky. The other thing is heart rate is very important, so you want to slowly get your heart rate up and slowly get it back down. The biggest thing is when we start working out, we want to go, 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 go. And you need to listen to what your body is telling you. Listen to the signs. Um, they're always there. The exhaustion. I think there's a difference between like physical exhaustion and mental exhaustion. And um, once you know the difference, you can become the icker on the gym. The next thing I want to encourage you to do, and I'm not giving really much advice on this, very generic advice because I'm not a nutrition person and I'm not a dietitianist, but I think something that I really neglect is eating full balanced meals. I have a really busy corporate schedule, so I usually skip breakfast. Typically lunch, I'll get like a small snack and then have a huge dinner and that is not enough. Make sure that you are eating enough to give your body the energy for the activities that you want to do. One thing that I really like is my Move With Us app. On her app, she has workouts and she has meals. It's basically quick and easy meals. She has like a whole library of things that you can make. I found it super easy for me to just go on there, type in recipes and pull them. Everything within moderation. Everything. Everything. Okay. Now, this is gonna be for my gym girly specifically. Proper form is everything. Now, when I started going to the gym like 10 years ago, I loved Whitney Simmons videos because I thought they were super helpful. I thought they got straight to the point. She showed us the form and it made me feel comfortable with what I was doing. Please, please, please do not hurt yourself. My like major gym ick is when I see people using equipment wrong or like swinging weights around. I always feel like my coach is activated. If there's younger kids in the gym, I'm definitely helping them because I want them to not blow their back out at 15. You really want to have that mind-body connection when it comes to the gym. I think there's nothing wrong with reading the machine, that was something I'm super guilty of when I first started working out was reading the machine and figuring out what body part is this supposed to work? How is this supposed to work? And kind of pairing them together. I'm saying, okay, I'm gonna use these five you know, machines today um, and then I'm gonna go home because I don't wanna get overwhelmed and I don't wanna get injured. I really wanna encourage you to find effective ways to track your progress in the gym. I know a lot of us like visual stimuli, so we want to take pictures of ourselves and see the differences or, you know, the Weight Watchers, people who like to, you know, know how much they weigh every week. I am very, very big on taking body measurements 
instead of just relying on the scale. The way that my body is built is my weight tends to go up with the more muscle I gain. Even if I'm slimming down, I'm still gaining muscle. So if I were only relating to the number on the scale, I would always be disappointed. You need to give yourself time to see progress. Anywhere between three to six months is when you can start to see the first signs of change with your physical physique if you're just working out in the gym. I think another thing that I'm gonna encourage you guys to do is to keep a fitness journal, track the workouts that you do, track weights that you are using. That's something that I've always been very mindful of. Every time I go to the gym, even if it's an equipment or even if it's a dumbbell, I'll write down, you know, January 1st, use a 10 pound weight for this exercise. And that kind of allows you to see as you go on with time, wow, I've, you know, I started out using five pounds and now I'm up to 15 pounds, which is a significant increase. Another thing that I want you guys to do this year is to incorporate variety into your workouts. Going to the gym every day can be super boring. Get your expectations like here. You have to take the time to really invest in yourself and figure out the workouts and the weights that work for you. Don't give up on yourself if you don't know what you want straight off the back. It is normal, it is okay. You are allowed to switch things up. It's your life. All right. Thank you so much for watching yet another one of my videos. I hope it was helpful. I don't really know. I, I feel like I was given the advice I needed to give, but maybe, maybe I wasn't. Um, so just let me know in the description because I get so nervous when I have to film sometimes. I don't fucking know. But with that being said, I'll see you guys next Sunday with another video. And as always, if you have the means, please donate to Make Wish Foundation in honor of my late friend Nyla. And I'll see you again next week with another video. Bye guys.